Sabrina here from Traveling Single Mom and today I wanted to give you a one month budget video for living here in Cuernavaca, Mexico. Now granted this is a month that we did not um, plan out money, we did not um, budget appropriately, it was just purely what we decided to spend. Whether it was getting a pop school here, going to a restaurant there, we didn't really um, plan out how much we were going to spend or try to stay on a strict budget. So this is purely just spending how we decided to spend day to day. And then I'm going to do another video starting a month starting tomorrow of us actually budgeting and trying to spend as little as we possibly can so I can show you guys the difference. So let's start out with our first category which is accommodation. So this is typically, besides flights and travel, this is typically going to be your biggest expense. So for us, accommodation came out to 508 US dollars. So that's only because I paid for um, October 3rd to November 3rd of this Airbnb and I also paid for November 3rd to December 4th for this Airbnb that we're currently at. So that was... Um, $200 each, almost $200 each for those two months. And then we also booked a two night stay at a hotel in Mexico City, which was $76. And then a one night stay at a hotel here in Cuernavaca because we just love that hotel. And so that was $42. So that's where that um, accommodation money came from. So our second category is groceries. So I typically about once or twice a month I go and I spend a lot of money at the grocery store to get everything we need, stock up on pasta, things like that. So we spent a total of 273 US dollars on groceries for this month and we did two big shopping sh trips at the grocery store um, in that about 30 day span. So third would be restaurants and this category is almost as much as our groceries so this category came out to two hundred and seven dollars so that's um, whether we go to little um, markets and spend money whether we get uh, strawberries and cream in El Centro whether we go to a fancier restaurant which we actually don't do that often so that came out to 207 so our fourth category would be uber and unfortunately we take uber more than we should we have to take uber in the morning because I stop teaching at 730 in the morning and she has to be to school by 8 so we only have enough time to take uber we don't have enough time to take the bus however when I pick her up from school I could definitely take the bus and I choose to be lazy and wait so that I take uber to pick her up but we do take the bus back from her school and I've noticed lately that it actually costs us almost the same to take an Uber from her school back home as it does for us to take the bus from her school to El Centro to back home, which is the route that we have to take because we have to take two buses. So it takes eight pesos each for us to take each bus. So that's 32 pesos. And I just looked it up on the way home right now and it was 33 pesos for an Uber. So we just ended up taking Uber because it's pretty much the same cost and it saves us a lot of time. So it depends on those things. So the next expense would be buses. So buses for us cost about $46 for the entire month and that's for me and Safari. Sometimes I take it alone depending on if she's at school or not but the total was $46 for that. And then also that $46 includes the bus that we took from Cuernavaca to Mexico City and then from Mexico City back to Cuernavaca and that was about $12.50 one way. So number six would be activities. So these activities would include going to water parks, going to um, kids museums, whether that was in uh, Mexico City or in Cuernavaca, going, just doing little things like that that's typically um, arcades, things like that for, for safari and for both of us to enjoy, going to the movies, all of those type of things. So our activities came to $116 for the entire month for activities and we do a lot of activities we typically do at least one to two activities every week typically on the weekends 
So number seven would be spa, and this is kind of where we splurge a lot. <laughs> so we get, both of us get massages once a week, and that comes out to um, about $100 a month that we spend on massages for both of us. We get mani pedis occasionally, um, haircuts, all of that type of stuff. So that is going to be a total cost of $175 a month for all of those expenses. So I think that's pretty good because, oh, facials, facials is also included in that. So we do a lot of different things when it comes to like spa, pampering ourselves, and only $175 for two people, I think that's a pretty good deal. So number eight would be other. So in other, I put, um, Many things that just wouldn't classify anywhere else. So maybe like toiletry type things or different things along those lines or things that we pick up such as I got a little um, gift bag kit for about $10 that had like a face mask in it, um, face lotion, soap bar, things like that. So different things like that that we get along the way that doesn't really go in any other category so our other is a total of $96 for this month so I have three categories that typically either wouldn't be in the list for you or even wouldn't be in the list for me on a normal occasion so one of the extra categories I'll call them would be ATM fees so I wanted to bring this up in this video just for people who don't have the same, I guess, luxury um, debit card as I do. But I was in the U.S. Air Force, so I have a USAA uh, debit card, debit and credit card. But it USAA reimburses you up to 15 U.S. dollars for any ATM fee transactions. So there are some ATMs here that charge a lot, like 100 pesos, which is about $5 for an ATM transaction. And then there's some that charge about $3. But either way, I usually only withdraw every week to week and a half. So I'm getting reimbursed for all of my ATM fees. So the ATM fees that came up in my spending was only about, um, eight dollars for the ATM fees for this month but I'm going to get reimbursed for that so it doesn't count um, another the second extra category would be clothes so me and Safari do not ever spend money on clothes but Safari is in school so she needs to participate in different activities that they do for school so she had to participate in um, independent Mexican Independence Day so I got her one of the traditional um, Mexican dresses and then I got a matching traditional Mexican shirt and then she got little bows to match for her hair so with all of that being said the clothing cost for us ended up being uh, $16 for all of that so that's not too bad and that's not going to be a reoccurring cost month after month that was just uh, extenuating circumstances and then the final extra category that I have is delivery so I'm going to do a video just about delivery um, from the United States to Mexico and from the United States to China because I think that in this day and age, we should have a much better process put in place for getting deliveries from different places, from different countries. And so far, my experience has been very negative for China and for Mexico in regards to getting packages. So I paid for my mom to send us a package from the United States to here in Cuernavaca, Mexico. So the package cost us, and we did research on the best prices, cost us 98 US dollars to send the package here. So I paid that online and then it was delivered here. So it took a long time, about two weeks, to get it delivered here. And then when it got delivered to my door, I had to pay an additional 780 pesos, which is about 45, 46 dollars to receive the package because of I don't know some international fees or something but I think that is crazy and ridiculous that I would have to pay that when I had to pay to ship it here I think that those two costs should be intertwined because how is somebody gonna pay to send me something what if I re refuse to pay the the international fee when it gets delivered 
you'll have to send it back to that person. It just doesn't make sense. But that is the third extra cost that I had. So that ended up totaling $138 to get that package delivered and received to myself. So in total, with all of the extra fees included, I spent a total of, drum roll please, a total of $1,839 for this month, which to me sounds absolutely absurd for out here, especially since our rent is only $200 a month. However, we did spend money very frivolously on certain extras that we didn't need. So um, not including the three extras, the total comes out to $1,687. So that still sounds crazy to me. And for this next month, when we start our budget tomorrow, I am going to try to keep it down to less than a thousand dollars for the entire month. So we'll see how that goes. But I just wanted to share this with you guys. So if you are thinking about moving to Mexico or thinking about traveling abroad, there are many countries where you could spend this or way less to live very comfortably. And it depends on how you want to live. If you completely cut out the spa, if you completely cut out, um, the, the Uber or um, restaurants, you can cut out so much out of the budget that I just provided you and make it much less than we spent this month. So in 30 days, I'm going to do another video with a very budget friendly um, budget on how much we spend for the next 30 days. So I hope I could get that to $1,000 so that you guys can much more easily prepare and finance traveling abroad. So thank you for joining us and I'll see you in our next video. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and turn on notifications. Bye!